Hey there class, Professor Steve here. And in this lecture we are going to take the water molecule one step further and instead of saying why is the why is why is the water wa water molecule, pardon me, uh so unique, we're going to say what is seawater? And and the answer to that is pretty darn obvious and the fact is that seawater is pure water or the water molecule with salt in it. We went over water being such a good solvent and it means it's good at dissolving things, dissociating them. And um, what we're really talking about, because there are many things that are actually dissolved in, in the ocean, but not all of them contribute to um, this, the ocean's salinity. But where we, what does are the salts. So anytime we take a salt, um, such as NaCl, which is sodium chloride, which is the same as our table salt, water dissolves it into its two main ions, which means it's broken up into its components and they have a charge, either a negative or positive charge, that means it's an ion, um, it makes the water salty. <clears throat> so seawater is essentially on average made up of 965 grams of pure water plus 35 grams of dissolved salt ions. I say material here, but, we're, but again, we're talking about the salts. Um, so we call that parts per thousand. Since 35 plus 965 is 1,000, we say that the average seawater uh, is, is about 35 parts per thousand salty. Um, the six major components of seawater are listed here. The chlorine atom, which is Cl, sodium ion, uh, which is NaCl, and those are elemental, right? Chlorine, sodium, sulfate, which is not a single element, but it's one sulfur and four oxygens. Um, uh, magnesium, which is a, a single metal element, calcium and potassium also single metal metal elements. If the ion that that's present has a positive charge, it's called a cation. If it has a negative charge, it's called an ion, uh, um, an anion. Sorry, and you could put either of these two. You could put either of these cations with either of these anions and make a different salt. And so. Um, when that salt's d dissolved, we get these ions, and that makes up the majority of the, the salt in the ocean. You can see chlorine and sodium are the two biggest ones, and that's really the same. These two go together to make sodium chloride, which is really the main, uh, um, the same salt that you use uh, on your food. So let me take a step back again real quick. So there are lots of other things that dissolve into ions in the seawater, but they're at such low levels that we call them trace levels. And they contribute, they're important for, for other things that go on in the ocean, but they're not they're not large contributors to the to the to the ocean's salinity or how much salt is in them. <clears throat> so the total amount, or when you add them up, up determines the salinity as we just stated, but and that total amount ranges quite quite uh the range is quite large um depending on the different parts what part of the ocean you're in uh, so if you're in an area that gets lots of freshwater input is wet um and it's close to the continent where where the rivers uh run off into the water then you're adding fresh water and decreasing the saltiness of it if you're in a dry warm climate where there's a lot of evaporation and very little water very little rain very little water runoff um, then you get a you're, you have much more salt per unit volume, and you have a very high salinity. And that range can be anywhere from 10 to 40. Uh, the Baltic Sea is an example where um, you get a lot of uh, freshwater inputs. Uh, the Mediterranean Sea, where it's hot and you get a lot of evaporation and very little rain, is a good example where you get a very high level of salinity at about 40 parts per thousand. But if you take all the salinity measurements across all of all ocean water, it averages about 35. So the salinity or total amount of ions in each volume of water can change, but it's important to note that the ratio of those ions is always constant. So how does this change and the ratio stays constant? Well, it's just important to see that um, for every one sodium, there's a chlorine atom. One sodium, one chlorine atom. So in this unit volume of area, I have a very low salinity, but there's still a one-to-one, one-to-one. -to -one. In this unit area, or unit volume of, of seawater, I have many of these, many more salt ions, so there's a much higher salinity in this unit, but it's still one-to-one, 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 one-to-one. So more salt, same ratio, less salt, but same ratio. It's important to make that distinction.
So let's revisit water's colligative properties and, and what what is the difference between pure water and salt water. Um, so we said that as a really good solvent, uh, water dissolves salt and dissociates them into their ions. And the sodium ions um, attach to the negative uh, oxygen end of, of a water molecule and the hydrogen ions attach to the positive uh, um, sorry, the uh, the hydrogen ions. Sorry, the sodium ion attaches to the negative oxygen end, while the negative chlorine atom is what I meant to say attaches to the positive hydrogen ends, and that and that's how the dissociation uh, occurs, and we get salt water. But we also went over the, the the uniqueness of water, and when it reaches its freezing point, it locks up into this very strong and stringent lattice pattern. Um, and in this case, the hydrogen to oxygen, hydrogen to oxygen, hydrogen to oxygen is very rigid, and nothing else can attach to it. <clears throat> so what we get is an exclusion of the salt, because there's nowhere for that to attach. So the sodium and chlorine ions and all the other ions that I talked about in the previous two slides um, are actually squeezed out of the water. We call that salt exclusion. Right? There's no place for these ions to attach anymore, or salting out is another term for it. So essentially, once seawater freezes, um, it becomes fresh because it kicks out the salt ions. So that's the effect of water's colligative property on the salts, but what's the effect of salt on water's colligative property? So when you add any salt, or, or I should say solute, to a solvent, um, it tends to have this effect. Um, when, you add, when you add a salt to seawater, it decreases the freezing point, so instead of fresh water freezing at zero degrees C, um, you would, the, the salt water would freeze at a, at a lower temperature, at a temperature a few degrees below that. And it has the opposite effect on the boiling point. It increases the boiling point. So you add salt and, and it takes more heat and a higher temperature for the water to begin to boil. And this is, this is the same for most, um, most liquids or solvents where you add a solute. You decrease the freezing point, you increase the boiling point. So what does that mean for seawater and the density of seawater? Well, when you add salt alone, it increases the density because you're adding more mass to each unit volume of water. But then if we also lower the, den lower the, uh, the, the freezing point, um, if you remember the fresh water reaches its maximum density right here at about four degrees C. But as we cool off, temperature increasing this way, density of the water increasing that way. As we, at very warm temperatures, it's a, it's, it's a very low density, but as we get hot, colder and colder, as we walk backwards on the temperature scale here, we get more and more dense. So right about here is fresh water's maximum density, but seawater, because it has salt in it and it lowers its freezing point, can just continue to get colder and more dense until somewhere below this point where it starts decreasing towards um, seawater's freezing point. And the average freezing point of seawater is about negative 2 degrees Celsius. And then, of course, once it freezes way over here at negative 2, um, it squeezes out all the salt ions and becomes fresh water, but also becomes less dense and floats. So if we look at the two on, on, on top of each other, density of fresh water, here's the, here's the graph, right? It's, very low density because it's warm, but as you cool it off, it reaches maximum density around 4 degrees Celsius. And then as it approaches its freezing point, it becomes less dense, right? So we have floating ice. With seawater, it's getting colder and colder and more and more dense, but since we have salt in it, it does not begin to decrease towards its, its freezing point yet, but just continues to increase in density. Um, until it does finally freeze at about negative 2. So the temperature of most oceans is in about this range right here because most of the oceans are deep and very cold and so those areas of the ocean are, are very very dense. So the overall effect of salt on the ocean is twofold. 
right? So as we add salt to the water, we actually make that water more dense. We make it have a higher mass per unit volume, right? So that's, we'll show this on this. So if we see seawater density is going up on this y-axis, this top x-axis is salinity. So as we increase salinity, we increase the density of seawater, right? So salty water is the most dense water. If we look at increasing temperature on this on this bottom x-axis, right, as temperature decreases, as we walk back and get colder and colder, it becomes more and more dense, more and more dense, and it goes, if you remember from the previous slide, it goes right past the density, the highest density of fresh water and becomes more and more dense. So the coldest water is the most dense, the saltiest water is the most dense. So the coldest, saltiest water is the most densest water in, in the ocean. So if we go back to our initial assessment that I gave you guys, um, where I said, is the uh, is is sea ice or or icebergs are they fresh or salt water? And we think about the structure of water and how it it locks into this lattice structure when it freezes and squeezes out all the salt. Then you should have said fresh. So where did all the salt come from? Well, salt comes from two main salt in, in the entire Earth's oceans came from two main. Um, sources prehistorically. One is outgassing, so from the beginning, uh, you know, when the Earth was formed um, and it began cooling, there was a lot of volcanism and the, the gases vented out um, very many different elements which, which were either ionic already or eventually dissolved, became dissociated into ions and contributed to the ocean's salt level. But there's also weathering of rocks, so same thing, since uh, prehistorically we had um, all this cooling molten lava and new forming rocks and those rocks uh, become exposed to weather which is wind and water um, and the rocks are made up of some of these same elements um, th that make up salts and as they weather they become dissociated and get caught up in runoff water run into the ocean and that's where the salts came from <laughs> So when we talk about the salinity, we're talking about those six main salt ions, right? Those, that's what I, want to, what I want you to think of the, in that a few slides ago where I listed the six major con contributing salt ions. Um, but there are other things that are dissolved in seawater and, and, and they are considered to be constituents of seawater, and so you need to be aware of these too. But just remember that from this slide on, we're not talking about salt. We're not talking about the salinity of seawater. We're just talking about other dissolved things. Um, primarily, we're talking about um, gases, um, nitrogen, <coughs> uh, oxygen, and CO2 are, are, are very highly dissolved in, in, in seawater and are very important in, in many different um, many different processes that go on and we'll get to those later in some later lectures. Um, also nutrients. Um, so we see here listed as a nutrient oxygen which we just talked about CO2 um, and then these are th this is a measurement for for total amount of, of, of certain constituents that we don't need to know. Um, pH is a measure of acidity um, but phosphate, PO4, nitrate, um, silicon dioxide, these are nutrients for, for certain uh, biological processes that go on. And these are also found dissolved in seawater. But just remember, they are not salts. Okay, so we need to strongly distinguish between the salts and this group right here, nutrients. Because we'll talk about nutrients a lot um, uh, over the next couple of uh, lectures, over the next couple of units, I should say, and and you need to be able to distinguish that nutrients, which are on these list here, mainly these guys, phosphorus compounds, nitrogen compounds, stuff like silicon dioxide, um, they are not salts, but they are dissolved in seawater. Um, that's all I have for this lecture, and we'll catch you next time.